That's good. Yes. Welcome to my channel. I want to find it. Two thousand five Cadillac CTS. All right, so I'm gonna explain how to take the catalytic converter off. This is the new one we're gonna put on. All right, so forget about removing the O2 sensor while the cat is on the car. So do not remove the O2 sensor. What you need to do is you do. You're gonna have to unplug the O2 sensor, which is that block right there. It's gonna be right behind, right behind the block. So you feel your hand back there. You're gonna feel the plug. So I've already unplugged that. Um, there's gonna be this heat shield. So the way I took it out, I got a swivel and a ten with a little extension and a drill. So you're gonna remove this from the top, that one, and this one from the top. Then you're gonna come on the bottom, under the car, and you're gonna remove that one. It will, it will come right out with the with the drill. So with the little impact drill. Once you remove those three screw, you're gonna pull. This thing is not just gonna come out like that. So you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to uh, flip it down. So you flip it down, and then you pull it out. You you kind of like flip it, and then it come right out. It's a little tricky, but you will get it. So you flip it down, tilt it a little bit, and then pull it right out. Once you have that out, you're gonna come from the bottom so you cannot get those two some Cadillac are they put the bolts some of them not all of them some of them they put the bolts on the bottom and some of them they put them on the top so this one happened to be on the top but you cannot get to them from the top because there's a bar I think for the EGR or something uh, is it a EGR no, it's for the water. There's a water line for the radiator and it's metal. So you cannot get a you cannot get a ratchet there. So what I did, I got a 15 socket with the ratchet. And look, I'm pulling it right out. As you can see right there. I'll show you the key in a minute when I pull it out so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that knot is a 15. Hopefully I can do it by hand. So I'm going to just show you. So look. This is what I'm using. It's a half inch extension. I mean not extension, uh, ratchet. But look, you see how this one bent? So you're definitely gonna need one of these that the bend because this is the way you get in it out. And this is a 15 socket. Has a lot of teeth, but it doesn't matter. It can be just regular 15. So basically what I'm doing, I just put it right on top. And then I just just work it so that's how I got both of them loose from the bottom here in angle and then uh, this one they are so old they might even they're gonna snap when I try to lose I know they're gonna break so that's okay because you're gonna have to put new ones anyway um, so yeah let me continue taking these off and I'll get to you right now. Before I forget, uh, I forgot to mention, I did remove the battery for two reasons. One, one, so I could have more room here to get to the sensor, so it wouldn't be on my way. 
and two because I was planning to get it from the top, but I couldn't get it from the top. I know that one I did it from the top, the other side. I did that one like about a year ago, but I didn't make a video for it. But that one I did, I was able to get it loose from the top. But this one you can because of the water line. So, yeah, if you remove your battery, you got more room. But it's up to you. Uh, I recommend moving the battery better, or at least disconnect the battery if you're not gonna remove it off the car. All right, so let me continue removing that those two bolts. All right, so now we're ready. We're ready to take these two. So, like I said, this one I'm sure they're gonna break because they look really, really old. So this one is gonna be a 13. 13. So I'm gonna start with the bottom one first. See, it's gonna twist. <laughs> oh, there you go. I told you. I knew it was gonna break. Now let's do the top. There you go. So both of them broke. So now, we are ready to take this out. So I gotta get the other two loose. I gotta get those two out so this thing can move back. But I don't remember removing this one because it would have been broken. <laughs> so I think I did that one without removing this one. So let me get a uh, let me get something that I can stick between here so I can see if I can get it to separate. Let me get a jack bar. See, got a little, got a little jug bar here. here. There you go. There you go. Should just drop. Uh, there he come. Right, hold on. The connector got stuck somewhere. Connector got stuck somewhere up there. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go up there get that unhooked but it's completely off already just hanging down hanging on the O2 sensor which is not a good idea but it'd be okay all right so let me explain something about this O2 sensor so now I know why a lot of people re remove these before and they just leave it up there hanging before they remove the cat because the way they run this they run this behind between the radiator pipe and something with the engine there so basically there is no room for this just to you know to snap out so you gotta kinda what I did I flip it 
and then I put it kind of straight like that and I wiggle it until I was able to get it out because I did try getting this loose with the O2 remover but as you can see it started to strip and it was not coming out so I couldn't get it out with these start to strip right there so what I'm gonna do now this key never fell so let me take this out first teach you all right so what I'm gonna do to take it out I'm gonna use this key this is made for uh, more like for plumber to do a sprinkle so I gotta find my weight in here which is look real tight but once you find your way in then I'm gonna just try to step on it there I think I got it loose Get it right here. Yep, yep, I got it loose. So, like I said, that key never fell. Look at that. That key has never let me down. As you can see, I got it out. Because I do have the whole kit for the O2, but. Just because this thing they have a uh, that gap is not strong, so it will always mess up your O2 sensors. I mean, but with this key, never fail. All right, so now it's time to put the new one in. So you just uh, oh, this is the gasket for this. Look, the heat shield. So if you don't use the heat shield, you're not using any gasket. So I'm going to have to, I don't know, I'm going to have to improvise, I uh, got to get four new bolts. As you, as you can see, this one used to have two bolts sticking out, they broke. This one doesn't have none. Now this one got two stick in. Uh, this one doesn't have no tread. So I'm going to have to just find some bolts and not four and put the O2 sensor back in the gasket and uh, my my replace the lower gasket the little donut all right let's do it all right so I put two new bolts there with watches behind and I got that one with new bolts Nuts and bolts and watches. Alrighty. So now I gotta put the heat shield back. Connect the O2 sensor. We should be good to go. Okay, so what I did to put the screw back for the heat shield. See that one right there. What I did, I put it. I put it with a little magnet. So I put it at the end. I stick it in, and then I move the magnet, and then I did it with a gun. Uh, so now I'm getting ready to. So that one, I went from the bottom and stick my hand up, and I put it in by hand. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie it up. Where is it? Right there. So I'm gonna find my way in there with my little extension. Right there. Got it in. Make it 
tight. So what I'm doing, I'm spinning the socket so I can get it in again. That's it. So now it's in. So the whole heat shield is on. That's how it looks. The heat shield on. So as you can see, the screw, they're covered with that. So you can't get to the screw. Oh, there you have it running. Everything's good. Thank you. See you in the next one.